In my two decades of being a NBA fan, I don't think I've ever seen a scenario as peculiar as Bradley Beal's. Because typically, when a star player is on a horrible team, that star player will stamp his feet and demand a trade. Look at what James Harden did earlier this month. Look at what Anthony Davis did about a year and a half ago. Hell, look at what Jimmy Butler did when he was done with the Minnesota Timberwolves. This happens a lot. And with Bradley Beal, we have yet to see anything of the sort. Although the Washington Wizards may have given us a little hint about his future. Now, before we get to the content, I wanted to remind you guys we're supporting a small creator on instagram by giving away three of his kobe bryant framed murals so if you want to enter in this giveaway a link to that's going to be in the description down below just go to my latest instagram post we're going to be announcing the winners on sunday night in my instagram story if you happen to be a small creator i really want to start utilizing my platform to give back to my community so slide into my dms with any proposals i would love to help you get your artwork out or whatever you're trying to grow out there as well. And now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Guys, let's take a look at Bradley Beal's last six games and the statistics he put up in his last six games. We have 47 points and six assists in a loss. We have 33 points and five rebounds in a loss. 31 points and seven rebounds in a loss. 34 points and nine assists in a win. 41 points, 16 of 29 from the field in a loss. And finally, 60 points and 70 rebounds in a loss. At the time I'm making this video, the Washington Wizards are tied with the Chicago Bulls and the Golden State Warriors and the Detroit Pistons for the highest odds to get the number one overall pick in the NBA draft this year. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, the top of this draft this year is featuring combo guard talent with some wing talent. The best players so far are Cade Cunningham, Jalen Suggs, Jonathan Kaminga, and Evan Mobley. And Jalen Green, it's still really, really early, so let's not dive into who deserves to be the number one pick in this year's NBA draft, because there's plenty of time to make content about that as the year goes on. And through it all, Bradley Beal has been a consummate professional. When he was asked about this situation a few days ago, he said, It's tough. I'm not going to sit here and be naive. Right? It's, it's tough, you know, because we want to win and I want to win. You know, this is why I stayed. You know, I want to win. You know, this is, I figured this, this is the place I can get it done. So it's tough. You know, last year was what it was. You know, we had a lot of guys out. John was out last year. It was just it's a rocky year. Um, COVID hit, so last year was just crazy. And you know, this year, it's you know, it's the same thing. Like in a mini bubble, outside the bubble, no fans, no nothing, no practice time. It's been tough, you know. Uh, and but for me, like I said earlier, man, I, I give it to God for just giving me the strength to just do it every night, to just show up every night, you know, regardless of what's going on, regardless of how we're playing. You know, it's my job to lead and come out and compete every night, you know. Um, and hopefully, guys will follow behind that. So. That's just been my mindset. You know, I, I feel like I would drive myself batshit crazy if, you know, I consumed in every single problem, like in every single thing that we did wrong, or every single loss. Like, I would, I think I'd be, I would be bat crazy. So, you know, I'm just taking it a day at a time, um, you know, constantly working on just focusing on getting better. How can I help my teammates get better? What more can I do personally to help us win? Because um, I'm never going to shift blame on my teammates. Or I'm never going to blame coach. I'm always going to blame myself or look at myself and figure out how I can win the game and help us win. So, same here. You know, it doesn't change. Uh, but I would be lying if I said it was easy for him. Now, according to 48minutes.com, they kind of imply whether or not the Wizards are willing to trade Bradley Beal saying that the front office vowed not to ship him anywhere. He doesn't want to go when he signed his extension in 2019, and they intend to honor that verbal agreement. Now, what this pretty much means is expect Bradley Beal to get traded to a top team 
And we also found out that NBA executives are considering making moves to improve a potential offer for Bradley Beal. Now this one's according to Brian Windhorst. It's what everyone's talking about in the league. There are executives out there, I'm just telling you this, I talk to them, who are talking about moves they can make going into the trade deadline or moves they can make now that potentially set themselves up to make an even better Bradley Beal offer when that moment happens. Whether it's March or it's in August, whatever. There are so many people watching this, even though he, to my knowledge, has not made any requests or anything. Now, of course, whenever there is a star player potentially getting traded, some BS source or some BS page will come out of the woodwork out of nowhere and throw in the Lakers and Clippers and other large market teams into the mix just to really add fuel to the rumor fire. But if you look at this Twitter page, which is where this rumor was conceived from, where the Lakers and Clippers would love to get involved, it's not verified, it's a fan account. Adrian Wojnarowski never said this, and I don't even think he needs to say this, because the truth is, the Lakers and Clippers would probably love to get involved, any team would love to get involved, but I don't think they have the sufficient assets in order to make such an offer for Bradley Beal. So to summarize all of this, let's just get you guys the facts, because I don't want you to misconstrue what's going on here. Bradley Beal isn't demanding a trade. Bradley Beal is really extremely like probably too loyal to the Washington Wizards for my own liking because clearly what's going on in Washington just is not working at all. Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal haven't been able to figure it out together. Maybe there's some other factors outside of just this brand new unit being formed. Maybe it's the fact that Russell Westbrook stinks. Maybe it's the fact that their starting five just doesn't play well together. If you do look at Russell Westbrook's box plus minus and his advanced statistics, they don't look pretty at all. He has negatives in offensive win shares. He has a 0.2 in defensive win shares. He has an overall negative 0.4 in win shares. He has a negative 1.4 offensive box plus minus, a negative 1.8 defensive box plus minus, and a negative 3.2 box plus minus, and a negative 0.1 value over replacement player. This is Russell Westbrook's worst season to date. As a matter of fact, he's only averaging 18 points per game. He has 10 rebounds per game and 10 assists per game, so he is nearly averaging a triple-double because he technically has 9.7 total rebounds per game, but he's looking like the ultimate player that is just stuffing the stat sheet for him himself, but in terms of contributing wins and in terms of efficiency, his game has completely fallen off. He's shooting 37% from the field as well, 30% from three. This isn't this isn't to bash Russell Westbrook. I'm saying maybe it has something to do with the fact that Russell Westbrook isn't compatible with Bradley Beal because Bradley Beal is also putting up career statistics this year. Now, no matter what the reason is, whether it's Russell Westbrook's fault, maybe Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook don't fit in together, either way, Bradley Beal isn't demanding a trade. It's just in the Wizards' best interest to trade Bradley Beal to a team, put him in a spot where he could contend during his final prime years. The guy is 27 years old, so who knows how great he's gonna be for how long, and then get a nice size return back for him to catalyze their rebuild for the future and focus on the development of Denny Avdia and Rui Hachimura. I don't think they could do that with Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal over there. And that's okay, because there are a bunch of teams that could potentially give the Washington Wizards what they would want in return for Bradley Beal. You look at a team like the Golden State Warriors, which a lot of people are pegging to be the favorite to acquire Bradley Beal because it makes like a cute little story. Klay Thompson goes out with an Achilles tear after tearing his ACL. Steph Curry needs a new partner in crime. There are times where the Golden State Warriors look like the real deal, but there's times where they don't look like real deal. You trade Andrew Wiggins and the Minnesota Timberwolves draft pick that you acquired as a result of the D'Angelo Russell trade a year ago. You get back Bradley Beal. Maybe you throw in a couple of future first round picks as well. When Clay Thompson comes back, you could moderate his minutes because there's not as much pressure on Clay Thompson to perform, or you could focus on that situation in a year from now. But at least you give Steph Curry a window of opportunity to potentially compete by trading Bradley Beal over there. Then you have a team like the Denver Nuggets, who have significantly more assets to offer for a player like Bradley Beal. Sending over players like Gary Harris, Will Barton, 
RJ Hampton and two first round picks is a pretty nice return for a player like Bradley Beal and are good complementary pieces for any rebuild. Hell, maybe those players will work out better with Russell Westbrook. It'll give the Washington Wizards some depth and will improve them significantly defensively. It'll give them a high end prospect to build around like RJ Hampton. And I'm sure you could swap out a player like RJ Hampton for maybe Bull Bull, or if they're really lucky, maybe they can convince the Denver Nuggets to part with Michael Porter Jr. That's a pretty big if. But as a diehard Laker fan, that'll always give you guys the news straight up. I'm going to be honest, there's zero chance Bradley Beal gets traded to the Lakers or the Clippers because the Lakers and Clippers are completely devoid of first round picks for the future. The Lakers gave up three first round picks when they traded for Anthony Davis and the Clippers gave up three of their own first round picks, five total in the Paul George trade. Another team that I could see Bradley Beal potentially going to is the Miami Heat. If the Miami Heat are willing to part with Duncan Robinson or Tyler Hero or any of their young assets and package them with additional first round picks, then I'm sure the Washington Wizards will take a look at that. But if you're the Miami Heat, you may also want to stand pat because Victor Oladipo has mentioned multiple times that he wants to join your team in free agency. All I know is it's officially in the Washington Wizards' best interest to trade Bradley Beal, and any of these teams would be a contender by adding Bradley Beal, or at least a contender to make it into the NBA playoffs. So let me know in the comments section down below, what team do you think Bradley Beal is most likely to go to? Do you think the Wizards should even trade Bradley Beal because he hasn't demanded a trade? And if not, what should they do in order to improve their situation? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.